Welcome to The Miracle You, guiding you on the journey towards finding passion and purpose and how to discover, create, and live a life by your design. Whether your success has been plentiful or your missed opportunities have been overwhelming, we can help you become a more empowered, masterful person and show you how to share your gift with the world. It's time to inspire change from within with the host of The Miracle You, Vince Kramer. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the special edition of The Miracle You, the Awakening Through Moments of Choice book series with Mary. Throughout the series, Mary will share with you her insights and feelings on our story that was shared in the book from my perspective. We know that what she has to share will enhance your experience reading the book. Let's get started. Here's Mary. Hi, and welcome to this episode of the Awakening Through Moments of Choice series. In this episode, I'll be talking about my thoughts and feelings around our next trip, which was to Aspen, his Illumination Intensive, and the Little Blonde Girl. This will give you a deeper understanding from my perspective of our journey. If you don't have the book yet, you can purchase it at Amazon using the link in the show notes. You might want to know what happened after Vince left for Vancouver that morning. I remember it was a pretty early morning for me, too, as I sheepishly walked into the kitchen to find Beth making coffee. Beth and I had been working together in real estate a few years, and we knew each other pretty well. But there was an unspoken bond between us that we both recognized on a soul level. She watched me walk across the room with the most hilarious smirk on her face. I knew I was seen in the most heartfelt way and also being called out in the same look. She laughed and gave me a big hug. We landed on the floor of the kitchen laughing together and she said, yes, I approve. I felt a deep relief inside of me and my heart opened more to Vince. I needed someone I trusted as much as Beth to reassure me that I wasn't making a big mistake letting yet another man into my life. It certainly wasn't that Vince was the problem. I was the problem. I looked at my divorce as a failure. I hadn't found the gifts yet. I was too wrapped up in self-judgment and fear of what my future was going to be like. My head was full of spiritual concepts. I lived some of them, but mostly talked about them the rest of the time. Little did I know that my relationship with Vince was going to take me to a level of living them and learning more than I could have ever known. I imagine many of you wonder what I thought about Vince's experience at the Illumination Intensive he describes. Just like he shared with you that he just signed up, I didn't really know anything about where he was going until after the fact. Again, I was pretty caught up in the joy of this blossoming relationship with him and pretty caught up in the day-to-day struggle of survival and competition. I wouldn't have gone to it anyway. I was the main source for my family's survival. After my divorce, I bought a house at a time when it was easy to get money. And we all know how that ended up in 2008 for many years. My mom was living with me and, of course, my youngest son. There was even a time where my adopted brother was living with all of us. I lovingly called us a famune, a family living in community. The best we could anyway, as we were living together, but in many ways living in separation. This was a very special time for me to experiment and learn from using the concepts that I had learned from St. Germain. You see, my strong metaphysical background that Vince speaks about really stemmed from the Tiburon channeling in 1992, that was my initial awakening to the life of separation that I was living. Vince and I define separation in our culture as believing that our real world is outside of us. As a culture, we use our five senses to determine who we are, why we are here, and determine our meaning. We live as if we are separate individuals in a world that is separate from each of us in an objective universe. This creates the belief that we are in competition with one another, more for you and less for me. 
that channeling was the start of a rebirth for me, one where I was introduced to the concepts of oneness versus separation. I say introduced because I was deeply entrenched in a belief system of I, not we. And that does not mean I was not caring or that I did not do caring things for many people. But I was in our society's old paradigm that to this day is evolving into a new paradigm, a new paradigm of we-ness. After that day in Tiburon, I had the opportunity to spend years studying the seminars and small group gatherings that were all on cassette recordings of the channeled teachings of St. Germain. I read books about the Ascended Masters and their journeys going from separation to unity. Many call this the ascension process that we are all waking up to, the new paradigm. And that was my education. It was focused on the Ascended Masters, and that is where the concepts I shared with Vince and he writes about came from. Little did I know then why I was so focused and why I had to catch up, so to speak. Riley and I returned from Aspen back to our home and had fun stories to share with my mom. In a private conversation with her, I shared with my mom seeing Vince's grandmother in a vision and seeing the little blonde girl only my mom knew about besides me. And I promise I will get to that later. I couldn't wait for Vince to get back the next week. I figured I had blown his mind that night sharing the visions with him. There was no way I could not have. It was so vivid, and the feeling of the space I was in was so otherworldly. You can see then how I looked through a filter of the experience being outside of me, outside of my five senses. My deepest hope was that he would be intrigued enough to ask me more deep questions and we could have more expanded conversations than we had shared over the past year. Just maybe the experience in Aspen would be intriguing enough that he would become the spiritual man I so desperately wanted, that he wouldn't go back to his normal life. The biggest thing I was missing in my life was connection. I was missing connection with my real self and real connection with others. I didn't know it at the time, but Vince was on the fast path to awakening. Yes, I was instrumental, but it wouldn't be long before we started a lifelong game of leapfrog. His willingness to do things that I didn't have the confidence to do was instrumental in him learning so fast. I reflect back in total amazement at his path that is shared in the book and I am sharing with you. In chapter 13, Tell Me Who You Are, he recounts in detail the brave journey he was unknowingly on to find connection in a paradigm of separation. I see now he had to understand this and fast. In his experience over those five days, he learned what true intimacy and connection is by gazing into another person's eyes. He learned at a new level what it is like to ask someone, what's it like to be you? And he learned to listen without judgment. And he learned that we are all the same. He had the experience of raising the vibration between him and another person. Most of us have had that experience of looking into someone's eyes when they are dying. We feel the connection. When that happens, can we remember that feeling of recognition that I am in you and you are in me? before we then move into sadness of losing that person? When you meet someone new, can you gaze a second longer in that person's eyes and make a real connection? When you see a homeless person looking at you through your car window, can you smile and look them in the eye? We have settled for such a low level of intimacy and connection, and so much is possible. In those five days at the intensive, Vince had leapfrogged past me and I didn't know it. There was no way he could go back to his normal life unchanged. He had taken a quantum leap. Chapter 14 starts with a quote from the roundtable. What you see as synchronicities in your life are actually two souls coming together 
to fulfill their agreement to each other through experiences of this life you have chosen. The synchronicity of Vince leaving Aspen feeling the demand to know why I had the visions and who the children were opened him up to receiving his answers. The answer certainly didn't come in the normal way of his known life, but it opened his eyes to us in a new way. And just maybe after having this awakening, he would wonder if this was a soul agreement. Like Vince, I was excited to get through the morning so I could see him again and hear all about his experience in Canada. When I walked into his house, I could feel the difference in him, and I could see the light in his eyes. Now I was beyond excited. I had seen this energetic difference in others in a kundalini yoga course I had taken the year before. A walk outside his mountain home seemed like the perfect way to hear all he had to share. As we walked at a fast pace with excitement, I was practically running to keep up with his long legs, but he finally stopped in his tracks as he listened to me retelling the story of first being introduced to the energy of the little blonde girl. I shared with him for the first time about the Tiburon channeling and skipped to the information I was given about her. St. Germain only had about an hour in human time to get my attention, to open my eyes, to open my heart, and to open my mind to the guidance I needed and was so desperately seeking. He told me that there was a twin flame who would come into my life that carried the genetics and energetics to birth and raise a girl who could bring a certain energy into the world, the divine feminine, and that would help people. Vince and I didn't go into the understanding of the divine feminine at that time. The most important part of the walk is that I finally shared with Vince everything. I had bared my soul. I could trust him now. That was huge. I believed in him. I needed Beth to help me be the barometer on the outside. Clearly, she and I had a soul agreement. And how we met and became real estate partners for 16 years and how we consider ourselves soul sisters was and is synchronistic. She helped me see past my fears. It is easy to see now how Vince's intensive and my strong urging for him to drop everything and come to Aspen for the night was synchronistic. The number of people who tuned into him and the soul agreements they had with him, finding a way to reach him was synchronistic. And it goes on and on. I want to share what I know now about this energy, the little blonde girl. Something that is not in the book is the years Vince and I spent trying to get pregnant with no luck. I was already 45 years old when we got married the next spring. That didn't seem to be what was needed to happen. What I didn't understand then that my focus was still on the outside of me and I thought a physical baby is what was supposed to happen. But it was me and Vince who were supposed to find, accept the divine feminine in ourselves. Our expanding into that energy is what she represented. We spent the next five years studying, traveling to spiritual sites like Mount Shasta, the Tetons, and other countries We attended numerous spiritual retreats. I share this with you because this was the start of my expansion and growth. And as promised, I began to find the little blonde girl in me, and Vince found her in him. I hope today's episode gave you a broader insight into the section of the book I covered. We all have personal journeys, and they are very different, yet... They have the same common thread. We are called to wake up and listen to our messages, to grow and expand. In the next episode, I am going to talk about the channeling that was the next big thrust of Vince's journey that changed our life further. Please enjoy the book. 
You've completed this episode of The Miracle You, but we have plenty more to help you discover your own personal passion and purpose. Head over to themiracleyou.com for free resources to assist you on your journey, as well as register for our free webinar, Discover Your Miracle Life, Three Mind Awakening Steps Toward Your Unique Purpose, or apply for a one-on-one Your Life, Your Way breakthrough session and discover your next best step on your journey. All available exclusively on our website. That's themiracleyou.com. We look forward to sharing more experiences of passion, purpose, and life by design next time, right here on The Miracle You.